In the previous lecture, we began a discussion on hydrohalogenation and we looked at the following reaction in which we had the following alkene react with an HCl molecule to produce the following carbocation intermediate. Now we said because this alkene is a symmetrical alkene, the left side and right side are exactly the same, they're identical, it did not matter where this H added to. In other words, if this H is added to this carbon or this carbon, we produce the same exact carbocation intermediate. Now in this lecture, we're going to talk about a different situation in which we are dealing with an asymmetrical molecule, an asymmetrical alkene. And that means the left side is not the same as the right side. So now it does matter where our H adds to because in each case we produce a different carbocation intermediate. So let's suppose our alkene undergoes our hydrohalogenation reaction in which the H atom adds to this carbon. So this P orbital, this P, this pair of electrons in the P orbital grabs this H atom forming the following carbocation intermediate. So we have a positive charge on this carbon atom here. Now in the second type, in a different case, the H atom can now add onto this side as well. So we have two choices, this carbon or the first carbon. So if the H is now added onto the first carbon, we form the following carbocation intermediate. So let's call this intermediate A and this carbocation intermediate B. So which, ones, which one of these is the more stable carbocation? Well, to answer that question, let's examine the molecular orbital picture for each of these carbocations and let's look for stabilizing interaction. Does any type of stabilizing interaction exist in A and or in B? So let's begin with diagram A. So here's our partial molecular orbital diagram for our molecule A. Notice that this carbon is sp2 hybridized. That means there is an empty 2p orbital, a non-filled 2p orbital that has a positive charge. And right next to that carbon, we have a chlorine atom. And that chlorine atom has three different pairs of electrons. Notice that this pair of electrons is found in the 3p orbital of the chlorine. So notice what we have. On this carbon, we have an empty orbital. On this chlorine, we have a filled orbital. So there's a homo-lumo interaction between this carbon orbital and this chlorine orbital. So the homo, the highest occupied molecular orbital, is the 3p orbital of the chlorine. And the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital is our open 2p orbital on the carbon. So there is a stabilizing interaction between these two orbital, orbitals, stabilizing our carbocation A. Once again, in this carbocation, there is a homo-lumo interaction between these two orbitals, causing the full positive charge to be delocalized to a chlorine atom. In other words, without this chlorine atom, our charge is localized onto our carbon. But because there is this adjacent chlorine, that chlorine can take away some of that positive charge. What it actually does is it donates some of its negative charge onto this carbon. And that is a very stabilizing effect. So, let's look at the following reaction. Let's look at carbocation B. In carbocation B, our open carbocation, our 2p orbital, is further away from this chlorine. In fact, it's so far away that there is no interaction between these two orbitals, between the LUMO and the HOMO of this molecule. So in this carbocation, the empty 2p orbital of the carbon is too far away and cannot actually interact with the filled 3p orbital of the chlorine. So unlike in A, where there is a stabilizing interaction, a homo-lumo interaction, in B, there is no such interaction. And so A will be more stable than B. So let's look at actually what's going on between the orbitals 
of this empty and filled orbital. So notice that our higher in energy 3p orbital that has the pair of electrons interacts with the lower in energy, our LUMO orbital. So HOMO and LUMO interact and we form the following two molecular orbitals, the bonding and anti-bonding. So this pair of electrons is now found in this lower orbital and therefore this molecular bond is much more stable than before. So this creates a very stabilizing effect and this is in fact known as resonance stabilization of your carbocation. So another way to represent resonance stabilization without having to have to draw out this molecular diagram is by the following manner. So once again, let's suppose we have the addition of our H via this step. We form our A carbocation intermediate. So here we have the formation of A. And now we can draw a double-headed arrow representing the second type of resonant form. So these guys are simply different electronic representations of the same exact molecule. These are Lewis dot structures. So one Lewis dot structure and the second Lewis dot structure. So notice that this pair of electrons interact with this empty 2p orbital forming the following double bond. And so now we have no charge on the carbon and a partial positive charge on the chlorine because it donated some of those electrons to the carbon atom. So this entire picture represents what the actual intermediate carbocation looks like. Notice that our carbocation does not go from one to the other. It exists as an intermediate between these two. So we must draw both of these forms, both of these Lewis forms, to represent the actual diagram of our intermediate carbocation. So let's examine what happens and compare to B. So intermediate A will be favored because the charge is spread out among more atoms. The charge, the positive charge on the carbon is delocalized to this chlorine because the chlorine donates some of that electric, some of that negative charge, some of those electrons found in the field 3p orbital. We do not have the same interaction in B because these uh, orbitals are very far away. So this will not only decrease the energy of A, the energy of this molecule, but it will also decrease and stabilize the transition state. It will decrease the energy of the transition state, thereby stabilizing it. So if we look at the following energy diagram in which the y-axis is our change in Gibbs free energy and the x-axis is reaction progress, we see that when we go from our reactants to our products, we get the following diagram. So this lower line represents our pathway A and product A is here. Pathway B and product B is shown by the upper arrow, upper um, curve. Notice that because A is stabilized in both the product, the intermediate form, and the transition state, both the transition state is lower as well as the actual energy of our product. So this endothermic reaction, this endothermic reaction will most likely go in this direction because of this stabilization in the intermediate as well as the transition state. So let's finish off this reaction by showing what occurs in the second step. In the second step, our chlorine acts as a nucleophile donating its pair of electrons or using its pair of electrons to attack this carbon. Now notice it does not matter which carbon attacks, this carbon or this carbon. This is actually one molecule represented by two Lewis dot structures. So it doesn't matter which one attacks, this is one structure. So once this lone pair of electrons attacks this carbon, it forms a carbon-Cl bond. And this is our final product. So, 
Once again, what exactly is a resonance stabilization? Well, it's simply our delocalization of charge, where before we have charge, localized charge, on a single atom, and after resonance stabilization takes place, our charge is delocalized onto many more atoms, as we saw in this case. So, no resonance stabilization and resonance stabilization. Resonance stabilization will act to stabilize our intermediate as well as our transition state, lowering both our transition energy as well as the energy of our intermediate, thereby increasing the rate of our reaction and causing more of our intermediates to be produced because more stability means equilibrium will be shifted towards our products, towards our intermediate.